Hey, good morning once again, options traders. And we got another good question from one of the traders in our group. And he said, well, if in the money options are good, how far in the money is good? In other words, if you wish to use an in the money option, how far in the money should you go? Should you go to an 80 delta, 90 delta, 100 delta? Well, it's a good question because we do use a lot of in the money options for various strategies. So let's go find out how far in the money is good. As always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's very much appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So the first thing that you have to understand, good or bad, options aren't good or bad. They're just tools. They are tools for hedging risk. We can increase risk. We can decrease risk. We can even shut it off completely. So if we hedge unwanted risk, that's using options as insurance but we can also use them for speculation and we get that through the leverage. Those are the two primary uses for the options. So the question isn't whether options are good or bad. As options traders, you've got to get that out of your head. The question is, what are you trying to accomplish? And that's why it's so important to start with a goal. Remember, you can't even define risk without a stated goal. But once we know what you're trying to accomplish, then we can probably address this question a little better. And to do that, we have to fall back on a couple of pricing principles that we've talked about. The first one says that lower strike calls are more valuable than higher strikes. That's assuming the same expiration and underlying stock. And as a corollary, higher strike puts must be more valuable than lower strikes. And so the thing that you have to understand here is that as you move deeper in the money, the options are becoming more valuable. And to do that, we have to reduce the strike for the call or raise the strike for the put. But for this video, I'm just going to use the calls for the example, but we could get exactly the same outcomes for the puts. So just remember that as call strikes are lowered, your deltas rise. And in fact, a theoretical strike of zero would be the stock. It would trade for the stock's price. So think about that. You could pick a stock price, stocks trading for 200. If there were such a thing as a zero strike price call, regardless of the time to expiration, in fact, you could say it doesn't even have an expiration date. What's that option worth? It's worth 200 bucks, not a penny more, not a penny less. It is stock. But notice what we had to do to get that. We had to move severely deep in the money all the way down to zero. So the thing that you have to understand is that changing strikes is a trade-off between your deltas and your insurance. So to see that come into play, let's take a look at long shares of stock. Here's our long shares, delta one, dollar for dollar up and dollar for dollar down. If we partition this with an exercise price, we pick some stock price in here and we just say, I don't wanna take any losses below this point. There is the call option, right there. So notice that there is our hockey stick diagram. And the difference between the stock and the exercise price is the intrinsic value for the call. But over here, the exercise price and the black, this gap right here, this difference, is the intrinsic value for the put. So think about it. Exercise price minus the stock price is the intrinsic value for the put. So you can see that the risk graph, even though we might draw it for a call, is really the same thing for a put. This is the option up here in blue. This is common to both the call and the put. It's just a question of whether we have intrinsic value or not. So the thing that you have to understand is that as you start moving further out of the money with a call option, you're getting more into speculation, something like a lottery ticket. But if you start moving way up here, deeper in the money, you're behaving more like stock. And the area in between is what you're paying for the insurance. So to see a good example of that, let's say that the stock is trading for 100 and we have one trader that buys the shares for 100, another trader buys the $80 call trading for $20 of intrinsic value, but only 10 cents of extrinsic value. Now the stock falls to 80 and we know that the stock trader is down 20 bucks. But what about for the call trader? If the stock falls to 80, yes, the call expires worthless, which sounds worse, because the stock trader over here could say he's down only 20%. But how much did he lose in dollars? He lost $20.10, not a big difference from the stock trader who lost 20 bucks. 
And the reason the option trader is worse off by 10 cents is that's what was paid for the insurance policy. That was the right to walk away. Now you might say, well, why would the insurance policy be so cheap? Well, the chances of the stock falling below 80 with it at 100, at least according to the perceptions at that time, wasn't worth that much. Maybe this is only a 30-day option, or maybe it's not a real volatile stock. And this just isn't seen as something that requires a big premium for insurance. So if we were to look at the stock, the $100 stock and the $80 call trading for 2010, this is what we get. And you can see that that red line, this is our $80 call. There's our bend right there at 80. And you can see that this red line is just edged out ever so slightly above 100 by 10 cents. So it's really hard to separate the stock from the option through this wide range. But where do we see a difference? We see a very big difference right here at the strike of 80. And at that point, we no longer take additional losses. So see if the stock falls below 80, we're capped out at $20.10, whereas the stock trader continues to lose. And now our call option has become a put. And we actually will make money, or at least lose less, if the stock falls below our 80 strike. So once again, this is showing why calls are puts, puts are calls. We can just as easily look at this call option as a put option because there is the insurance. And the reason the insurance is so cheap is because the stock is way up here at 100 and very few people think that it's going to fall below 80. That's why they're only willing to pay 10 cents for the insurance policy. So the thing to realize is that it's always a trade-off. As you move further in the money, calls are becoming more like stock. Yes, you get a lower break-even point. That's a good thing. You start making money sooner. You also have a lower time decay. The only thing that can decay is the extrinsic value. So in that example, it's 10 cents. But you also have a low insurance value, and that can be a negative, depending on how much insurance you think you need. So the better question is, for any given trade, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make it behave like stock? In which case, go super deep in the money, get that extrinsic value down to almost nothing. If you're trying to get leverage, maybe go to out of the monies. But it's these trade-offs that we have to consider. Now, this trader also asked if I could give some examples. So let's go over to E-Trade and take a look at some call option prices. So here we are into the E-Trade platform. I'm just going to use Amazon. I happen to have it up here. So the stock is at about 95. And let's take a look at the Feb of 23. It's got 81 days until expiration. The lowest strike at this time is a 50 call. So that's got over $44 of intrinsic value. So take a look. Right there is your intrinsic value, $44.59. The extrinsic value is only $0.82. Cents. The delta right there is 98 and a half. This right here in the business we would say is trading at parity or is stock. Might not be perfect stock, but it's close enough. It's basically just the cost of carry that you're paying here for the $0.82 cents as opposed to the insurance value. So is this good or bad? Well, again, you really can't ask that. If you bought this for 45.37, which is the mark, the halfway point, we do have a very high delta. It's going to behave like stock. We're going to make almost dollar for dollar up, but we're also going to lose almost dollar for dollar down. That's the bad side. It's good and bad. High deltas work great when the stock's moving in your favor, not so great when it's moving in the wrong direction. But what about the leverage? If you really wanted to trade stock and you were willing to pay 94 and a half for the stock, well, you're much better off paying 45 and change for the option that is virtually stock. That's just a little less than half the price. So you're still getting basically two to one leverage. But in the stock market, you would have to go for margin, put a 50% deposit on, but you might get maintenance calls. Here, you're not going to have a maintenance call. And if the stock does fall, you will eventually get gamma coming to your rescue. We don't have it now, but we would if the stock starts to fall far enough. But this right here is stock. So once again, don't say, is it good or bad? Or how far in the money is good or bad? This is stock. The question is, are you trying to trade levered stock? Because that's what this is. 
Now, another way to show that is if we change the time to expiration, the price of this option isn't going to change much. So watch, let's go from 81 days to expiration to, we'll come out here to 200 days. See, now it's trading for 46 and change. It's just going to tack on a little bit of extrinsic value, more for the cost of carry, a little bit for the insurance value. We can see the insurance value over here is 86 cents. The balance is cost of carry. So again, we have to say this is basically shares of stock. So let's go back to our Feb strikes and let's look further down the list. What if you didn't want it to behave virtually exactly like stock? Well, maybe we say 85 deltas would certainly be good enough, but now you're paying $22 for the shares instead of 94. That's only about 23, certainly under 25%. Now you're getting four to one leverage and the additional money that you're paying over and above the stock price is 285. So almost three bucks for the insurance value. Why do you pay more for the insurance value here at 75 strike as opposed to the 50? Because there's a better chance for the stock to fall to 75 compared to falling to 50. People are willing to pay a little bit more for the insurance value. So in this case, I would take the 75 strike if you wanted reasonably good deltas, but also wanted a little bit of an insurance policy here. So in that case, we might take the 75 call. What happens if we come up to the 95 strike? Now we're ever so slightly out of the money, basically an at the money option, you're going to pay 850. Notice that's the most extrinsic value of any option on the board. That will be true for the at the monies. Our deltas got whacked in half, 55 delta, but we also have some gamma. If we are correct, these deltas are going to manufacture and start to create new deltas at a faster rate compared to any other option on the board. So that could be a good thing if we're looking for a fast, aggressive move. So it's just this whole trade-off of saying how far in the money do we want to go? And each step, here's our at the money, each step that we go up, here's the 90 strike, we're going to pay a certain extrinsic value, $6.85. Take another step up, 514. Another step up, 383. Another step up, 286. What's happening? The extrinsic value is falling because the insurance policy is falling. So that's why I say it's always this trade-off between how much exposure do you want to the stock? Do you want it to behave like 64 shares of stock? In which case, buy the 90 strike. You're going to pay a lot for the insurance policy. The good news is you're going to get a lot of leverage. You're going to pay $11.35 instead of 94 and a half. So that's probably about 12% of the stock's price. Now we've got tremendous leverage. And for the same money, we could buy many more shares of stock. So if I bought five contracts, I've got over 250 deltas, and I've still spent less than 100 shares of stock here. But that becomes a speculative use of the option. So I hope that helps to give you a better insight into just how far in the money you should go. It's not a question of good or bad. So if somebody asks you how far in the money is good, say, well, here's your choices. What are you trying to do? How much delta do you want? How much of an insurance policy do you want? And there's a trade-off between them, and it's up to each trader based on the goals, not based on an arbitrary level of how far in the money is good. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find the link in the description below.